All right. Good evening, everyone. This is uh, the, the uh, Tuesday, October 13th edition of the Maui Day TPO's Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee uh, meeting. Um, so, <coughs> sorry, excuse me. Time right now is 5.32 p.m. And before we get started in the meeting, I'm just going to go over some uh, rules of engagement for the uh, uh, participants and any of the people attending or watching online. Number one, this is a public meeting and the, and the meeting is being recorded. If you experience any tif technical difficulties, please contact Lisa Wan at the number on your screen, 954-716-8823 or her email so that member of our technical support staff may help you uh, getting either to get a signal so we can hear you talk or so forth. Uh, during the meeting, all attendees shall remain muted. Um, except for the public comments period. If you wish to provide a comment, please use the raise hand button. Once you see your microphone unmuted, please proceed by first providing your full name and then your comment. Your microphone will remain unmuted until the comment has been fully addressed. Committee members and presenters, otherwise known as panelists, are encouraged to enable their end cap web cameras and mute their microphones when not speaking. And for committee members only, uh, to move or amend a motion, if there is any sort of a a motion or resolution that is needed that is done at today's meeting. You have to have to have your uh, your video your, uh, and um, sound on record. So that that way, if, when, when we do the roll call, I can see we can have for record you saying yay, nay, or and so forth. All right, um, Lisa, go to the next slide. Here is our agenda with a slide deck. We just did the uh, call the meeting to order. So. Now we're going to go ahead and um, do the approval of the, the call meeting order and the roll call. And so the meeting has now officially started at 5.34 p.m. And I'm gonna go ahead and call the roll. Uh, so uh, for members, please, uh, please unmute yourself so you can re uh, respond. Uh, Chairperson Colin Worth. Present. Uh, Vice Chairperson Mike Fleming. All right, and then members, Francisco Arbelez. Here. Edgar Ayala. Sabine Deluche. Here. Charles Fisher. Uh, Melissa Hagee. Here. Hank Sanchez Resnick. Here. Sibelis Rosado Mota. And Eric Talberg. Yeah. And for the record, uh, member Brett Bibo, he will not be here today. And so he, he already told me in advance, so he has an excused absence from today's meeting. Okay. Um, uh, Colin, the gavel is yours. All right, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the October BPAC meeting. Um, next slide for the approval of the agenda. Uh, can you pull up the agenda, please? Has everyone had an opportunity to review the agenda? Actually, that's a minute. I that's think. a minute, right? Yeah. Uh, hello, this is Eric Tolberg. Uh, I reviewed the minutes, and I noted that we did not uh, capture the discussion on shadows. Uh, I think it would be good to table it to another meeting uh, when we, we could have both uh, uh, Transportation Public Works and uh, FDOT uh, weigh in on what their policy is and, and then have a better discussion so we don't go around in circles. All right, so that would be for the, for the next item, but um, let's do the approval of the agenda as shown on the screen. Um, I don't have any, any modifications. If anyone else does, say no. All right, approval of the agenda. Mm -hmm. Can I get a, I get a I will motion. I'll motion to approve the agenda. Okay. Second. Second. Who right, was thank that? Thank you. Frank. Okay. All right. That's uh all in I'm assuming everyone's in favor. Yeah. Do you wanna do you wanna go through motions? Nope. <laughs> nope. All right. Um, let's Did, go move on. Anybody anybody with a name. Let's put it that way as you said. 
Any names? Right, we'll do it. We'll do it like that from for the rest of the evening, unless yeah. unless uh, required to do it in a different way. Mm -hmm. Okay. So moving on to the approval of the minutes, um, taking into consideration Eric's comments uh, from a moment ago. Um, are there any other um, any anything else with the minutes that uh, would like to be discussed? I move. I move the uh, minutes uh, be uh, uh, approved. Uh, well, actually, hold, hold on one second, Eric. Because it, um, it, it's because when you first were talking, you said that you wanted to have the approval of the minutes to uh, move to another meeting. So was it move to another meeting and or approved now? Because um, yeah, it's the discussion on Sharos that I oh, think he wants no. to move to another meeting. But I think it should be reflected in the minutes that that we discuss shadows and uh but i suggest that uh rather than going into it now or we should uh, uh put it forward to another meeting when it can all uh, be brought up uh where all the views are known and we don't have to go around in circles okay all right so can i get approval of the minutes not everyone at once I move the minutes be approved. I'll I second. Thank you. Uh, anyone not in favor, say say it now. All right, motion moved uh, and approved. Uh, next up, public comments. I didn't see anyone from the public um, in the in the pop up, but I'd like to extend this opportunity for anyone in the if there is anyone. Um, listening in who would like to share something or ask questions or participate now would be a great time. All right. Thank you, public. All right, member report. So if there's, this is an opportunity for anyone, uh, any of the members, uh, if you have any items that you'd like to bring up, uh, now would be a great time to do that. So, I would. Hello, Hank. Take it away. Um, yeah, this is apropos of uh, what we were just talking about with the Sharos. I said that I was going to write something up and make a proposal based on my research, and I didn't have time to do it. Um, so I'm glad we're going to postpone the discussion to another meeting. Uh, I'm really interested in following up. Uh, I just didn't have time to write something or I would have written something and submitted it, submitted it for discussion, but that won't be necessary. We'll do it at the next meeting. All right, anyone else have anything they want to discuss? Hey, Frank, Francisco, yes. Uh, I, um, I saw a, an application um, for a pedestrian overpass over the FEC um, and old and Dixie Highway up in Aventura. I'm not sure if that ever uh, if that ever came uh, through here a, a while back or uh, or if it didn't. Um, I don't know if anybody recalls that. I don't remember. Um, Do you remember the street? Uh, yeah, it's um, it's it's over FEC and Dixie, um, just north of Ives Dairy. So the sidewalk connection is uh, and it's the Ives Dairy Road as it goes over um, this game. Well, it's an F dot project. I I believe that we brought it up. Um, um, Gannett Fleming, with regards to comments on um, the pedestrian bridges tends to give lots of comments on those, and that was one of them. Um, they were proposing, it's because this, this bridge that you're referring to, if I remember correctly, this is the, gonna be the first one that's actually maintained by FDOT. Typically, FDOT doesn't maintain them, so we have to make some modifications based on what maintenance has agreed to. Um, however, we still want to make sure that that bridge is something that's gonna have some longevity. Um, and because FDOT is not traditionally the one that maintains this, we don't have a lot of experience, but thankfully 
Gannett Fleming has assisted with prior projects with, um, I believe, the county, um, maybe, maybe others, but when it comes to pedestrian bridges, so they have some experience and knowledge when it comes to the design features, even when it comes to the elevators, the lighting. Um, but if you have certain comments, Francisco, that you didn't get to give the first time around, that I know we've, they already, I think, at 100%, if I'm positive, because we were giving comments um, but if there's something that you want to say, perhaps I can um, well, get you I'm, I'm, well, I'm not clear uh, if, whether or not it came to this uh, committee before, but- I, I'll look that up. I'll look it up in a prior, um, I would have guessed that that would have come up earlier this year. I would have guessed that would probably be January or December, but I'll look. Um, yes. in, in, in case it doesn't, um, uh, I, you know, would want to make a note that the um, the staircase um, doesn't um, isn't too bicycle friendly. I know they have the um, the elevator, mm -hmm. but the the actual staircase as it goes up doesn't have any improvements that would allow for a bicycle to go up the staircase. I mentioned that as well, um, and that was a feature I think because of space we weren't able to uh, um, accommodate. But I we made those comments. Okay. Uh, I forward you the I will forward you the presentation that we that we mentioned that project in. Thank you. Um, but yeah, we did. We, I mean, like I said, we had a, a lengthy meeting, get probably ninety percent to incorporate some last minute. Um, we thought dire improvement. Thank you. Um, it's here. If I may ask a question. Uh, Francisco, you submit. Just want to make sure we're exactly where. Um, I know you just said Dixie, but is this? You said the bridge was north of Isdale Road. Is that what I? Is that what I heard? Or south? It's uh, on the the northern portion of the right of way. Um, so it's a little bit north of the street. Um, um, it looks like they're they're redoing um, the way that this game Boulevard and and, and all, all that. All the, I don't know. Okay, the, the reason the reason why I ask is because it, uh, south of Isaiah Road is there's is the proposed location for the Brightline uh, Aventura oh, no. Station. So that's I, I want to make sure I didn't know if you were to refer to that or was something different. So. No, it's different. It's different. Okay. Right line station is uh, not that close. And it's the same city. But this is um, uh, this is on the edge of Aventura. It's actually, you know, one side of the bridge is Aventura and the other side falls in the county. And then I don't, and in this case, I do not recall seeing that. Um, it may, I guess like Tiffany will double check to see if there was any things in the, in the, in the in the in the uh, tables for the F dot materials, but uh, just for the record, the the TPO is doing a is doing a study regarding the access to the Aventura or just uh, train station, which, and that that started in in March, and uh, with the because at the time the station was the estimated proposal for the station being opened was uh, this month, but as you know with everything else that's been delayed. But they did break ground last month, but that's push everything sacro back. Um, I'm confirming that the that we are talking about the very same bridge right now and then I'll, I'll in a moment I'll 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 confirm that. Okay. All right. All right uh, in the meantime do you does anyone else have anything they want to uh, bring up? Yes, uh, I have uh, four things. Uh, I uh, I have no hand up so I have to just yell over. Uh, First, uh, for Miami Beach, the uh, beach walk, uh, which uh, the boardwalk was taken up and uh, pavers are being put down from 24th to 45th Street, uh, that should be finished in uh, June 2021. I uh, sent a progress report uh, uh, to uh, Kevin, so... Uh, that can be distributed to everybody. Uh, second, uh, they mentioned that they put in temporary parking protected bike lanes on Washington Avenue from 5th Street to 16th Street. Uh, I haven't seen those, but uh, they've said that they 
put them in there during the uh, the COVID-19 shutdown. So uh, maybe the uh, member from uh, uh, the beach can uh, take a look at that. Uh, second, uh, the COVID-19 uh, rolling uh, testing signs are no longer in the Southwest 211th Street protected bike lanes. Uh, the project is complete from US-1 to the Library Government Center. Uh, uh, third, the sidewalks on 137th Avenue from uh, the Turnpike to US-1 are almost complete, but there's a lot of vegetation growing over the 10-foot sidewalk installed earlier uh, that needs to be cut down. Uh, lastly, uh, vegetation is completely overgrown the sidewalk on 296th Street, uh, which will connect the chrome path that's due to be finished on January 2021 uh, with the empath. And so that's an important uh, sidewalk uh, uh, connection, and uh, the vegetation needs to be cut, and a few sections of sidewalk need to be installed. Thank you. All right, uh, Tiffany, did you have a follow-up yet? Yes, that, that bridge is um, Northeast 203rd Street intersection. So at between um, uh, US-1 and West Dixie Highway. Does that sound familiar? US-1 and West Dixie Highway? West Dixie Highway. I'm, I'm pulling up the plans right now. It's just taking a second because they're pretty, they're pretty big. But um, let me bring it up. You guys continue. You, oh, I can jump in later. Tiffany, just real quick. It's the address is two zero four zero two Biscayne Boulevard. Okay, let me look. I'll, I'll have to I'll have to pull it up on Google Earth. Just confirm. One second. All right. Um, anyone else have anything they'd like to bring up? On Eric's point of the parking protected bike lane in Miami Beach, um, I haven't personally seen it, but we actually had a discussion as a bike safe team earlier because one of our team members has seen it. Um, and if there's any opportunity to make that more permanent, it's something we would love to support. Um, it does run in front of Feinberg, Fisher, K through eight. And we've done tons of activities with that school in particular. So I know that it's a school that has many young students that are riding and biking together with their families. So I think it's a, an awesome thing. And we just hope that that's something that might become more permanent in the future. Thank you. All right. Can we make a resolution asking that it be made permanent? Sure. Yes, I think that would be a very good idea. Um, and I can, I can pass, uh, I don't know if it's called a motion, but a resolution, I guess, um, that the BPAC support that the temporary protected parking bike lane on Miami Beach, Washington Avenue uh, become a permanent bike lane, whereas many tourists, um, students, families bike along Miami Beach and in favor of safety, that uh, we would hope that that would become something that would be a permanent structure. I second it. All right, uh, Kevin, did, you were about to say something? You're muted. Still muted. Or just really quiet. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, no, I, I said thank you very much, Sabine. That's all I said. Okay. And so we have Eric as the uh, second, so I guess we need, need so I mean, the uh, they two. Oh, hold on. We had Sabine and yeah, Sabine uh, did the motion and Eric seconded it, correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. 
And then any, any nay votes? All right. Hearing none. And, and hearing none. And I have the same seven members here. Nobody's new come in. So seven zero. All right. Great. And Francisco, that, and sorry to, to interrupt, but that is, we were talking about the one in the same bridge. So okay. uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up the comments regarding the, um, the, the stairwell and uh, I'll read those to you. This is Yannick. I have a question. Go for it. Um, this resolution uh, referring to the Washington Avenue protected bike lanes, how does this get to Miami Beach? How do they receive this? How do they even know that a wrestle was done here? Uh, the, hold on a sec. The, if, any, if anything, um, Yannick, what, I, what I'll do is once this resolution is uh, um, signed off and such, I would probably just forward it to, to the contact person I have over there, which is Jose, Jose Gonzalez, and just let them know that the, or the BPAC did that. In other words, and and they can take the reso and and go from it from there. If they, you know, but it's that's that's most likely how they would they would find out. Got it. Thank you. All right. Um, we can come back to. Uh, the uh, PED bridge, if there's anything else to add, um, Tiffany? Yeah, um, actually, I, I can state it really fast because um, we made comments, we, rec we requested that the stairwell be widened and that the entire um, channel be added. Um, and then after a meeting with them, we determined because of space provided, um, we were not able to do that. All right. Um, I don't. I don't believe there are any other member reports, unless there are. If there are, you know, state it now. But if not, we will move on. All right, Yannick, the Department of Transportation and Public Works update. Good evening. This is Yannick Fernandez. Um, I'm representing the Department of Transportation and Public Works from Miami-Dade County. Uh, the presentation today is going to be very condensed. I have just added here um, some new projects that are going to come up. Um, do I have control of the screen or? Okay, there you go. Um, and, and this other project that, that is a maintenance project that it's uh, almost completed. Um, I just wanted to bring it up. This is uh, Northwest 22nd Avenue from 119 to 151st Street. And um, it was a maintenance project just to improve the friction of the road. Milling under surfacing was done. There were um, bike lanes, existing bike lanes here already. And um, when the construction department um, sent us uh, the request to review, um, I requested that bike uh, green be installed on the project. And a, uh, since funding is not usually part of the maintenance projects, there was um, a lot of um, issues with getting funding, but finally um, we were able to fund the green paint. As you know, it's pretty expensive. It's, for this case, it's more than $250,000. And um, the green paint was installed at conflict points. There is another upcoming section along the same corridor and uh, for maintenance, maintenance only for the friction. And we're going to work towards um, implementing green and conflict, conflict points as well. Um, there is um, a grant that we're working with FDOT for complete streets that um, we're trying to submit implementation of conflict points, um, green paint at conflict points for multi lanes, high speed, high traffic roadways. So that's something else that we're working on. Um, it hasn't been submitted yet. We don't know whether funding is going to be there or not, or whether it's going to be, be, be approved or not, but that's something that we're working on to try to highlight and emphasize these, these lanes on multi-lane roads. 
um, that's basically it with respect to just green paint for bike lanes, existing bike lanes. Um, if you go to the next slide, please. These are some of the new projects that we are going to be working on. It, it, these are, I just got them this week. They're very preliminary. I don't have any information to give you at this point, whether they're going to have on road bike lanes or path or what, whatever the case is. The highway division uh, and myself, we're going to have a meeting and um, to discuss what type of facility we could, we could try to implement here, depending on space, on budget, on everything that we have to look at. But um, I just wanted to add this information in case you had any specific concern or any specific request for any, for any one of those to, um, to send them to me. Hey, Yannick, uh, this is Colin. Um, I just want to request that where you're adding lanes, um, the facility type should be a protected facility um, instead of an on-road facility like um, you know, a buffered bike lane, but a protected you know, curb or raised um, or raised separated trail. Um, you know, a lot of these are some pretty big expansion, four to six lanes. It would be pretty bad to be on a standard bike lane on a six lane road. And that's definitely the my what my my first comment is going to be. But then again, we have to work with the right of way that we have. Um, what is it that 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 has been, you know, the, the main scope of the work because the funding source is for widening of these roads to improve capacity. So we have to work with what we have and see what we can implement. But totally agree with you with respect to protection. And just curious, is that something that the rest of the BPAC would agree with? I would. Eric Kohlberg, I think uh, you need to uh, look at the same thing that we did, uh, uh, or we proposed on 97th Avenue, which is uh, a combination protected bike lane path on both sides of the road, uh, 10 foot wide, which doesn't take up any more room than a sidewalk and a uh, and a and an unprotected bike lane. Uh, it, uh, it and it would be a lot safer. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and that's it. The last uh, slide is just existing projects, um, which you you already have that information. But that concludes my presentation. Thank you. It was very brief. Thank yes. you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm sure there are uh, questions. Did that, yes, uh, if that is not in the, uh, I didn't see it in the uh, agenda, uh, can you send that to all of us, uh, uh, Kevin? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, this, uh, yeah, they uh, submitted this to us, uh, I think, Monday or yesterday, I forgot, yesterday, or I think it was. So it was not in the original agenda package, but it is. It is on there now. I will. I'll send to you individual slides um, after the meeting. But if you if you click on the meeting link for this meeting that had the agenda package, you'll see it's on there now. Thank you. Any other questions for Yana? All right. Thank you very much. We appreciate your presentation. Thank you. All right, Tiffany, FDOT District 6 project update report. Take it away. Um, I will see, let me see if Nelson is here yet. He might not be, but that's okay. I can, um, actually, Norellis, are you there? Yes, it's, uh, it's yeah, you and Norellis. I'm, I'm on, um, Nelson's going to be joining us shortly. So in the meantime, if I know Ed is logged on, if he, if we want to move on to the, the connectivity presentation to give Nelson some time to log on. Okay, yeah, that, that'd be best. Okay. 
All right, so we're going to go to the item, item eight then, uh, Tiffany? Yes, please. All right, so Lisa, go to that. There you go. Thank you. All right, and then I will have um, Ed give an update and I'll jump in. Um, and thank you all for all your comments. I know Brett, I know um, Eric has provided quite a few comments and I appreciate, we, we appreciate all the comments that you've been providing. Oh, and Nelson's on, but we'll-, we'll Yeah, I'm here first. as well, yeah. That's okay, we'll do the connectivity first and then we'll jump back to the um, projects that awesome. we're Awesome, thank you. Great, great. Thank you, everybody. Uh, uh, I'm, my name is Edward Aparicio with Gannett Farming, working with Norelles and Nelson and Tiffany on the connectivity assessment. The Right now, as we're working on the, the network analysis portion of this project, we're doing two things. We're reviewing what we're calling a, a gap analysis within the, the existing and upcoming network. And we're in, uh, in, tangent, in tandem where we are preparing for the, uh, the, the countywide workshops that we're, we, are, we are preparing. Uh, next slide, please. Right, so um, what, one of the, the main components is that we're trying to get uh, maximum, uh, maximum involvement within for this project, we're trying to get uh, as many stakeholders, municipality representatives, uh, countywide agencies uh, involved in, in each of these workshops. And what and part of that is we're we're doing some early communication prep to get people more aware and uh, put this in the forefront of their mind that these workshops are coming up. What you're seeing right now is just a uh, a portion of what we're calling like an initial like an introductory. Um, literature that we're going to be sending out to every municipality liaison. Uh, this first slide uh, is a quick breakdown of what this project represents, why they're receiving that information, and so on and so forth. Next slide, please. It, if we just we're going over a, uh, we're also providing them a quick breakdown of the overall scope of the project, where we're at currently, as you can see the network analysis, what we're currently focusing on. Next slide, please. Good. Perfect. I think we need to just want to go next slide. There you go. And so basically, and this is, this is something that's hot, we're, how we're highlighting the, their, their overall involvement is that one, we're going to initial coordination will, is, will be involved with uh, us cr uh, reaching out and, and letting them know what's going on and letting them know exactly the overall process of this project and how it's going to flow. The idea is that all the municipalities are, are going to be broken down into essentially four groups. These groups are going to be comprised by their geographical proximity to one another. So uh, within that group, we have we try to keep the the number of municipalities relatively even, but um, some some areas are more densely packed than others. For example, the downtown area, uh, which, which we're calling uh, East Central at this moment, is going to have slightly more municipality representatives. But the idea is that within those within each of those groups, we're gonna develop these proposed connections that would be with a big emphasis on creating connections to and from greenways to important destination locations, and also closing gaps from to and from greenways with other existing low stress bicycle facilities. That way we're trying to really utilize the existing network and maximize the ability for people to actually travel between uh, municipalities and to actually get to the locations that they want to go. I mean, in Miami-Dade, as you guys already know, I'm preaching to the choir here, they, there's a lot of lines on a map when you look at bicycle facilities, but there's plenty of gaps in between. There are a lot of, a lot of isolated bicycle facilities right now. And so with that in mind, we're, these proposed connections or gaps that we're trying to fill, they each municipality group or each stakeholder group will re receive a list of connections within their area, within their group, and we'll ask them to review these proposed connections 
And so by the time which they will see receive before the actual workshop begins. And so when we actually get to the workshop itself, we want to have a hearty discussion, but a focused discussion about whether or not they find any particular uh, proposed connection that we're offering as a complete no-go, either because it's counterintuitive with local initiatives that they have, they, it wouldn't make sense to have bicycle traffic on there, or they know that there's incredibly oppositional residents there, NIMBYs and, and whatnot. Um, that way we can, we can focus our efforts further and progress further with projects that are more feasible, more, more likely to be actually constructed instead of say, I won't, I won't go as far as wasting our time, but we want to maximize the success of these proposed projects. And after the workshop, you know, we will also, you know, municipality members or others may not be able to attend the workshop. There may be a conflict in scheduling. So a follow-up process after this is that we'll be reaching out to those individual stakeholders, trying to uh, get a hold of them and get their opinion and get, get their input and also follow up with information maybe they don't have at the time of the workshop and that they, they need to provide uh, us uh, to uh, provide DOT uh, post-workshop. And of course, we, as part of this, uh, this gap analysis, we're, we're gonna wanna have your opinion as well as we, we develop this information, we'll want to be able to each gap or each, each group, uh, gap analysis group, we would love to have your, your input as well. You guys always give great comments and feedback. And uh, next slide, please. This is just a, this is part, still part of the literature that they will receive. It's, a, it's just a quick, uh, at, more abstract uh, example. These don't represent actual uh, connections. It's, uh, it's just uh, emphasizing the idea that, say, if one municipality had 100 connections, it's not going to, but hypothetically, if they did, we didn't want to feel like the stakeholder, that municipality stakeholder had to, is absolutely responsible for every one of those connections to be reviewed. We would like to get their feedback on everything, but we're primarily, uh, a municipality will primarily be responsible for reviewing proposed connections on municipality maintained roadways. And uh, ideally, say DOT would need to review the, uh, the proposed connections on their state roads and so on and so forth. So we're trying to, to spread out the work. We're not trying to overwhelm anybody and try and therefore try to maximize further people's willingness to be involved and not to just uh, shirk their responsibilities in improving that bicycle network. Um, I'm gonna jump in really quick, Ed. Um, Please do. And yeah, I just, wanna, I just wanna state this because as we know, as anyone that works um, in transportation and works with these projects, a lot of times we can have a wish list that says we want this type of facility on this road, but then once we start to dig into the project, that's when it can actually stop whether it be public opposition, whether it be an environmental um, issue. Um, there's a multitude of reasons why a project might be halted, but the purpose of this is to get an idea of, okay, where, where are the areas that could be, that, that need um, to have a connection? Where are those located? And then what facilities are within those locations that could fill that gap? Now, us identifying those and, and then reaching out to those municipalities or our county partner or even within FDOT and saying, okay, does anybody know of a reason right now, just as is, have we looked at this in the past? Um, do we know of something that, you know, is just blatantly clear that we absolutely cannot do this? Maybe it's an environmental issue. Maybe it's cultural. Um, maybe it's um, other issues that, but it's one of those things that we need to to, to be able to say this one is absolutely not possible. And maybe we'll also find that one is very possible because it's already been in early talks. Um, so it's about us weighing um, which should we should not consider at all and which maybe we should consider more because um, they're already showing interest. Excellent. And just again, this is Nelson, just to add just one more thing to that. I mean, uh, we want to also be pleasantly surprised in the case that let's say we reach out to municipality and good news is, well, yeah, we already have that in our CIP or in the carpet improvement uh, plan, right? So the idea, again, is just to filling this network as much as possible with as much information as that we don't currently have available. So yeah, 
getting their support for a proposed um, route, but it could be that, you know, we're thinking of a route and they're saying, well, yeah, we already have that and we're going to build it within the next couple of years. Good, great. You know, let's move on to the next one. And so. I, I do have to say too, I am concerned, I'm concerned right now because of the state of things. I don't know what other agencies are looking at with respect to manpower. Um, I don't know what type of um, higher, what type of situations they're they're looking at as far as how many people they furloughed, but I do I do have a concern that we may need um, I I might need to be um, thinking creatively or maybe even expanding the timeline. For, um, but I mean there there are things that we might face because of our unique situations. Now I haven't really talked to Nelson and the team about this, but I do I. Do worry, and I and you guys can tell me if you if you disagree in my worry here. But that if I that I send these things out, and that they don't have the manpower to review them um, because of the unique state of things. Yeah, these, that, that's a very those are very good points, Tiffany. Yeah, it, it's certainly an orthodox situation right now. In, Hopefully we can make, the idea is to make this information as concise and as readable as possible to make it, you know, not, not, not a chore, but, you know, and not see it, make sure that municipalities see this as an opportunity, right? Um, next slide, please. And uh, as, as you guys are aware, we are in the process of, of working through and developing and, um, uh, and sharing at the the DOT online interactive application. It's the this uh, application is entirely focused around the the existing upcoming and long term bicycle network within Miami Dade County. Uh, it has a lot of a lot of good information and a, an important feedback feature where you can dynamically and interactively uh, uh, map uh, feedback where wherever we we're missing information and so on and so forth. You guys are aware of this. Um, we're now making sure part of this material that we're going to send out to the municipalities. That's going to be a, we're, we're going to then going to be sharing with everybody else in the, in the county. Um, and next slide, please. And, and as part of the last portion of this, which I believe you guys have already seen, this is the user guide. So the, this, this initial stakeholder informational package is broken down into two, essentially two parts. The first part is the introduction into this connectivity system. The second half is going to be uh, offering them a user guide to help them uh, with the application and the functionality of the online uh, of this online app. So you can uh, move through the the next few slides kind of rapidly. They most of the BPAC members have already seen this. If not, if you guys have any questions about this material or the app itself. This is a great time for you guys to ask us, um, and this represents the, the the second half of the, the material that we will be sending. Uh, this is Eric Toberg. Uh, I uh, tried to get on uh, earlier, and I could not uh, find how to uh, zoom out. I could zoom in, but I couldn't zoom out. And the other thing I need is a way to get into that. Uh, uh, into that uh, app. Uh, I originally got onto it from a uh, email, but I don't uh, remember what the date was. So, uh, if uh, if uh, Mr. Walford could send us a uh, another way to get in, and uh, I and figure out how to uh, zoom out. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, we um, yeah, every once in a while we're we're running into uh, a few a few hiccups here and there. Um, for now, it's not it's not the the most fine tuned way of doing it, but uh, one way of, of resolving that issue of say either you can't zoom out or you're having trouble moving the the map, uh, refreshing the 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 website is a way of uh, sort of resetting that and your you should uh, eliminate that issue. And also, um, and, and if Kevin can uh, send out that link again, that'd be great. And if you ha ever have a question at that moment, like say you're, you're using it at the moment and uh, you have a question or you're just having trouble, 
maybe Eric can also can forward my information. I'm, I'd be happily to get on the phone with you or, or answer questions by email just to, to maximize uh, your, your experience with the, the online app. And, and Eric, just to clarify, we are calling it application, but in its current state, it is just an online link. There is no uh, cellular like application. Um, it's just that online link at this point. So uh, one more thing to add, if you, if you actually do have the user guide, because uh, I know Kevin sent it, it sh the link should be on the first page of the user guide, um, mm -hmm. way to access it too, um, in, in case you actually already have the guide. For the PDF, if not, you know, like Ed said, no, Kevin can always uh, forward the the link. Yeah, I was I will send it again, but um, as as Tiffy mentioned, it's um, not not a uh, mobile app; it's an online application. That's coming. That's coming soon. No, 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 no <laughs> I'm aware of that. Yeah, yeah. No, I know. Yeah, yeah. I would say it's not a mobile app yet. Like, sure. But it's right. an online application, so it's you know it's yeah. not something that's going to be downloaded on your phone uh, at this time. So it'll just be the uh, link and then you know, use it from your uh, computers and such. Uh, hopefully, we have hopefully we have a lot more questions from the BPA members. This is Eric Kovac again. Uh, one of the things is you're, you're breaking things down by municipality, uh, but there's other entities. Uh, for example, Southwest 137th Avenue. Uh, we need to extend the bike lanes and sidewalks. Uh, through the uh, uh, heft or, or turnpike. Uh, so it needs to be by uh, commissions or whatever as well. Uh, and for example, the Biscayne Everglades Greenway, it goes through several different towns and much of uh, unincorporated aid. Uh, so there's no real uh, champion for it. Yeah. Um, we're, when we're breaking up the, the, um, the county, when we're breaking them up, we're breaking it up into four groups. And we've tried to group the, the municipalities based on sort of their characteristics. I know um, Ed had spoken on this a little bit, but also about some of those um, facilities that might um, be included in multiple municipalities that are adjacent to one another. Um, but we are we are attempting to do that to help streamline things. Um, but we are we do have to have a um, we do have to have um, a contact or a maintenance you know a maintaining agency even if it's just one you know one city is maintaining one portion and another city is maintaining another and maybe the county is maintaining another. So if that's the case, we still need to have that. As, those individuals, those agencies identified um, so that th we know exactly who would be responsible um, for bringing those um, or making those updates. And that's also one thing, that's an excellent point, Eric, by the way, and I, ideally, and I know Yannick is here and I know we've talked to Julian as well. I mean, the idea is all, and, and even you guys, we won't have the workshop until, until we actually get the right players in there. Meaning, you know, if we need representatives from, from different agencies, the county and obviously TPO included. The idea is to have everybody there that has somewhat to do with the area, right? Not, it's not just, just the municipalities, right? And hopefully having a representative from the TPW and the TPO, even for all the, the workshops, the four, the four of them. So that's the idea, that's the goal. Yes, uh, not, not only municipalities, but also agencies for example, uh, uh, Parks and Rec uh, is the maintenance uh, group Certainly. for many trails, yep. even yep. though the uh, municipalities may be responsible for getting people to cut their vegetation. Yep, excellent point, yep. Pros is actually, they've been pretty responsive to this and they've had excellent feedback thus far. And yeah, the idea is to, to have pros involved also with everything related to the greenways and just the entire network, so, so yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, to follow up on Nelson's uh, point, uh, with each of these workshops, ideally we would be we'd have some uh, countywide agencies represented in uh, all four of those workshops. You know, the the stakeholder, the municipality stakeholders would be uh, individual to the the groups, but say TPO, DTPW, uh, pros, 
I, in a perfect situation, they would be present and actively engaged in all four of those workshops. Um, Tiffany, I'm not sure if we, if there's anything else you would like to cover currently about the, the connectivity assessment or if BPEC members have any other questions. Um, I, I don't, I mean, there's nothing else on this that I would like to state. Um, we can go to, well, um, yeah, we can go to the other presentation now, the beginning piece of the, of the reviews. And then I do want to make another comment just because I'd rather um, you all, I know, I would rather you all hear this from me instead of, because um, I have had, I have reached out and, and told one individual, but we're all, the but central office will be sending out correspondence soon, um, officially, but um, I was just so alerted yesterday afternoon, at the end of the day, uh, that our Sun Trail solicitation has been canceled for this year. Um, so I wanted to alert everyone. I'm a, I apologize for having the kickoff meeting. I was told that we were going to have it, but yesterday they've canceled it. So I, again, I apologize for any time wasted um, for the Sun Trail application cycle for the 26-27 fiscal year. Um, uh, Tiffany? Yes. This is Kevin. So I guess one, once, once you're able to get that, that uh, Comp documentation from central office, you'll forward that to myself. I will be forwarding it to you and to um, everyone else that was on the meeting, mm -hmm. for the kickoff meeting, but especially you, and you can forward that to anyone else that I did not include in the kickoff meeting. Um, but again, I I was shocked, and I, but I understand um, we are being faced with some, some large budget uh, constraints due to COVID-19. Mm -hmm. This is Yannick, I have a question for Tiffany. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, uh, the, the transportation alternative program, it's it's still ongoing? I haven't heard any different. Um, that would be Ziamara, but I haven't heard anything. It could be um, that it, it's all based on the funding sources. Okay. Um, but I know, because um, I don't know also that a lot of that coming from the LAP office is federal funding too. I don't know what type of impact the federal funding sources have gotten. So I'm not going to speak on behalf of that, but I would expect that if it was to change, you would find out very soon. Um, okay. I would say you'd probably find out something in this week if that were, if it were going to be impacted. I mean, that's what I would say. Um, sorry, my phone is ringing. I'll put that on. Um, and another thing is, um, I know a lot of you had heard about Mobility Week, and I know that um, that Hank has expressed interest in it. Um, Mobility Week, we, hold, we host it all, every year, and I know this is on a lighter topic. Um, it's um, a way to promote other modes of, um, of transportation. Um, this year, is the, the big focus is bicycling. Um, I'll share more information, but I encourage all of the BPAC members, I encourage everyone to download the Love to Ride app and participate in our challenge. And there are prizes to be won. Um, let's get everyone all of our bicycle advocacy groups involved i'll send you all core i'll send you all information on how to participate in the um love to ride challenge um, and also if you would like to host any events um whether it be virtually or otherwise please let me know um, there's a form um, i'll be participating in a small group bike ride with the town of miami lakes i'll make sure to send pictures but i know they're trying to keep that fairly small the Sun Trail uh, program is is uh, funded by the state, yes, or federal actually, funds. Yeah, it's called PLWR funds. It's actually collected from um, the uh, license registration. So I didn't think that would be impacted, but based on um, I, but I, I just because of the general impacts on the whole state, they probably most likely had to reallocate funds. Um, Good enough. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh Eric Tolberg, let me clarify. Uh, it, this is the projects from the 26 forward. Uh, this is not projects that are Sun Trail uh, uh, under construction or starting uh, in November of this year. Is that correct? It shouldn't be. I I can't speak specifically if it were if it's programmed to be funded. This fiscal year, I would expect that it's not impacted. I would, but don't, I mean, I can't say anything 
Um, I've only been told, the only thing I can say I can speak on is that the Sun Trail application cycle, the solicitation that was for this year that would fund the 2026-2027 um, year, that has been canceled. So I don't know about the, the projects that are currently um, programmed in the, in the five-year uh, tentative work program. I can't speak on behalf of those. We'll hopefully be finding out more. Um, but I can only speak on behalf of the, the new solicitation. Thank you. No problem. All right, sorry about that. Um, good, I guess the Mobility Week is good news and Sun Trail, not so good news, but I'm, I'm, unfortunately I'm not surprised because of COVID-19. Um, but I will have Nelson begin the other presentation slides. Thank you, Tiffany. So again, <clears throat> I know we've talked about this plenty of times and, and the idea behind us reviewing a million projects that at the end of the day, we, we, we end up not having a lot of say in it. It's like we're trying to consolidate as much as we can from them um, to, to see how they're actually impacting this network that we're working on and this future links, gaps, et cetera, that we're trying to fill, right? So if we wanna go through, through the next slide, um, Kevin, um, so again, what we presented last time, this is the existing network. And just to echo what I'd said before, you see a bunch of lines on a map, but they're all disjointed, right? So this is what's out there. And again, what's out there that is available. Let me make that, <laughs> let me say that one more time, because this is, again, it's public data is what we've used so far. And this is actually, and, and I want to encourage you guys to one more time, go into the, the link, uh, or even, you know, at this point, even if it's through email, the more feedback that we can get from you on the existing network, the better we're going to be able to build on it, right? So this is what we have that's available. This is, again, from the data that uh, DTPW, FTAT has. So again, we, we've shown it here as, just to say, okay, look, this is a network. This is jointed. Then the next slide, if you, if you uh, want to move forward, it's what's upcoming. We're calling it upcoming because it is funded. Uh, so it, it will be built, right? Uh, yet still leaves a lot to be desired, right? Because again, there's gaps, et cetera, et cetera. So we just, you know, using this as our basis, Every project that we review now, which is a bunch of them that come through the pipeline, not always, you know, uh, from a bicycle pedestrian perspective, not always adding to the network at all. So what we've done is we've only focused on the projects that we we know that will be adding to this network as short or as long as as as, as can be. So if you move on to the next slide, um, uh, from the 49 projects that we reviewed, only three actually add link add uh, links to this network, right? Um, one of them being the uh, pedestrian bridge at 41st over there in Dora, and then the other one being Lutnam, which is already um, funded and it's upcoming. So showing it here, it's a little bit duplicative, but still kind of shows, look, there's, we're reviewing projects that are actually adding to the network versus just, you know, just reviewing projects for the sake of them. The other one, uh, and I'll go through the list if you want to, the other one's Okeechobee, the funded road. Again, it's just what we said, let's just show the projects that are adding facilities, right? This, whether, again, some of them are not joining anything, still leaving gaps. Still, we want to show projects that are, you know, providing uh, lines on the map, at least for now, right? So again, this is the full list. If you have questions on any of these, feel free to reach out. We can send you more information. But for now, again, we just went through listing the ones we reviewed and highlighting the ones that are actually contributing to the, to the network, right? Um, so uh, moving forward, just a little bit more detail. Next slide, please. Um, next slide. Uh, a little bit more detail on the actual projects. Again, we don't want to... There's, there's not a lot of space here to provide as much um, or all the information from the projects, but the idea is just what type of facility is it adding and at what stage is it, right? As you can actually see here, there's three different stages, right? You have, for example, Okeechobee, you have 100% plans. While we have commented plenty on this project, there's certain limitations because we always get the typical answer, oh, it's not in our scope, you know, there's not a lot to do, but it's still adding a bike lane. So it is part of our network and we're considering. We got another one that's on pd &E. As you guys well know, the Ludland Trail, I can say anything that you don't already know about it. Um, um, and then you have another one that's a solicitation, an RFP for a pedestrian bridge. So again, different stages, but still all adding to the network and still somewhat opportunities to, to make a difference on them, right? So again, this just goes through uh, each one of those projects a little bit more in depth, right? What they're adding, uh, how they're contributing um, to it. Um, again, should you have specific questions about them? Should you want to comment? Um, again, I would never discourage anybody from commenting on anything. We try our best 
to provide those comments to 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 the to the designers slash engineers and Tiffany would testify to that the many fights that we've gotten into. Actually, speaking of that, Nelson, um, uh, before you came today, um, we had a discussion about the pedestrian bridge that we had um, had that meeting with Fabiana about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You remember um, the one on two hundred third? The one on two hundred third? Yes. Yep. Um, so we are having a conversation about that um, because it was brought up that um, that the stairwells are not bike friendly. Oh, you don't say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So but yeah. We, did, we, fought, we, we fought hard. I'm going to say we did fight hard, but it, the, it just came down to the right of way constraints. Right. That, yeah. that we couldn't accommodate within the yeah. right of way room. Um, and again, 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 Tiffany would tell you, we, we try to accommodate as many things in there and we typically get, and it's a tough fight and we'll keep fighting it, but it's again, you know, we need to accommodate bicycles on pedestrian bridges. You need to provide coverage from the elements. You need to make sure that your access to the actual bridges is wider than the approaches, yet somehow engineers think that is the opposite, right? They always want to narrow it at the choke point, which is insane to me. And again, we keep fighting them, but that's what we get. So again, it's not for lack of trying, but again, just, just like I said, encouraging you guys to give us as much feedback as possible. We always relay it. We give plenty of our own, right? And then we, we make a change when we can and where we can, right? And, These are- And um, I think it was brought up and I am kind of thinking back. I know that um, if we, I'm, I'm trying to think, did we, do you remember including the that pedestrian bridge in any of the slides in the previous BPAC meetings? I'm I want to say that we did. Yeah, yeah, we did. And I was actually, there was actually a comment. I think it came from Mary or, or Colin. I don't remember that we were showing the right sheets because there was a roadway project that has a pedestrian bridge and the sheets that we were showing didn't actually show the ped bridge. Then we changed it, we showed it, and then we went on and, and on and on. Okay, because I was just, I remember it was, we had the meeting with Fabiana in January. I know that we had a couple of canceled um, BPAC meetings, so I just wasn't sure. Yeah, we, we showed it and actually we got good feedback and, and, and was actually translated into our comments on the ERC but again you know we we had plenty of meetings with them and, and it ended up being where, where it's at because you know scope constraints etc cetera, etc cetera. but we did make quite a few good improvements that I hope indeed indeed yes yes one of them being covering the stairwell you know it may not be good for 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 a bicycle but at least it won't get wet and water won't seep into the elevators which again is common sense but somehow engineers don't think it is go figure um, so I can say that because I'm in it or not. Anyway. <laughs> so uh, moving forward, um, again, next slide. Um, I think it just goes through each one of the details or just a picture of, of, of each one of these. You got, like I said, you know, this is the frontage road for Okeechobee, as you saw it on the map, it really links, it doesn't provide any linkage to anything. And that's what we're trying to do with our bigger effort that Edward uh, talked about, but it's still, it's adding a link, right? And just like this one, that's something like I was mentioning, we want other communities or the, the, um, the municipalities, look, we got projects that are adding to your network that you don't necessarily know about because it's not public anywhere, you know, and then this is the whole part of the whole uh, of the feedback, uh, you know, back and forth, especially from you guys too, where, you know, we're showing stuff and it's either wrong, it's missing, et cetera, et cetera. So this one is one of those that, again, it's building a bike lane, not to our preference at times, but it's still adding a bike lane to where there's none today, right? So it's adding to our network. Uh, next slide. Uh, Eric Toberg, I have a point on that. Yes, uh, please. Okeechobee Road, uh, you've been putting bike lanes on the main road in many places, uh, and of course they don't show up on your map because they're, it's over a 40 mile an hour road, uh, but it would connect to those other links. Uh, and one of the critical things is when you uh, do it on the uh, service roads, uh, which is good because it's a lower speed road, uh, but you do need to provide a connection uh, through the main uh, connection, such as at the turnpike. You've got to put a, uh, uh, a sidewalk or a path underneath the turnpike uh, so you can connect from one service road uh, to the other side. Yep, excellent point. And like I said, and, and we, we noted we make these types of comments and often, oftentimes, again, I don't want to discourage anybody from, from, from providing feedback, but it's, it's typically there because at, especially at this, for this particular project is so late in the game that, you know, we usually get resistance from, from several different places as far as like, it wasn't in the original scope. It's a fantastic idea. And I always say it should have been, and it may never be too late to change it. Right. 
but it's still we always get this so yeah those types of comments always welcome eric thank you very much you know if it, if it does we'll make sure that it at least we'll make the comment and we'll put it out there hopefully they they, they, they provide the connection if not it's still a valid comment because it, it will go into our gap analysis and then as, as part of our you know future projects and how we develop them etc cetera, etc cetera. because again the goal is to scope them way ahead of time so that we prevent comments like it's not enough. absolutely so that's again why the bike network plan is so important because it can have a, it can create those targeted asks so that exactly. we target our asks to the locations that they're going to be best fit exactly. and they're going to have the biggest bang for their buck exactly. i have a question um regarding the okeechobee project um the five foot bike lanes on both sides of the frontage road uh why are you not doing the seven foot um bike Colin, lanes as standard thank you thank you for asking that Colin. I appreciate that. So that was my first question. And again, the and 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 again, I'm representing DOT here, so I'll, I'll choose my words wisely. Um, I asked the same question that you did as a reviewer, and the response that I got was that there is a choke point, and the only thing that fit in there was five feet. So they decided to go with five feet, and therefore a variance was obtained for a five foot bike lane instead of a seven, which actually fit for the remainder of the stretch. And that is where I would leave it. But I did fight for that one. I made the comment plenty of times. But again, the, what I the the message that I got was there's already a variation to provide a um, a narrower bike lane because we so have can I can I can I just follow up on that? Is um, yeah, there's a single choke point, or the entire thing is a choke point? There is um, um, a stretch that is a choke point. So this the stretch that is not a choke point is also being Im impacted the same way that it's also a bike lane is also provided that is five feet wide that it's, doesn't make any sense you're, you're my words exactly gone that is what i said <laughs> so um again it's it's this this is a type of thing that we want to capture again for some reason when we get it and then and, and again it's a it's a matter of timing at 100 percent plans you know as much as we fight and and again tiffany will testify that we fight and they all think we're crazy and they always say, oh, it's been looked at forever. Why well, you guys need this comment now? Well, you we changed consultants or we looked at it now because it wasn't provided, et cetera, et cetera. We fight the fight, but again, it always comes down to, you know, there was already a variation obtained. Uh, again, it makes, from a Nelson Moore perspective, and I'm speaking just as Nelson Moore here, don't quote me for anybody else other than myself, it makes absolutely no sense, just like you said. And that's why we made the comment from the get-go. But again, the response is typically those types of things. You know, it was already, there was a, and this one in particular like that, I was, it, it didn't make sense to me. If there's a so, choke, um, it should so, be only at the choke point, not a- Right, point. right. Um, or if there's a segment that is, that is not able to accommodate exactly. the seven foot. I, exactly. but, and so a variance was sought to, to go to five foot for the entire roadway and the central office approved that variance knowing that it was only a segment that had that problem? I, do you, again, choosing my words wisely. I, I, no, I, 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 we, we don't have to, we don't have to play yeah. around. Just, just, you know, yeah. I, the, that's what happened, correct? With, yeah. yeah, within projects, they, if they need to get a variation not to include the standard bike lane, that variation would cover the whole project. Right, right. and so the project manager uh, chose to do that rather than do it right or at seven foot and then go to five foot yeah it sounds like that i mean that's what they chose to do for consistency sake i guess but i i mean i agree with nelson the preferred alternative would be to put the the buffer in where you can i i think again and T tiffany would, would again echo this uh colin the thing is and from our perspective from the internal perspective not that we're, again we're representing the ot the idea is not to bat mouth the OT whatsoever, but oftentimes it's misinformation and that comes with preparation ahead of time. So like, because oftentimes when, it, when a project gets to design, it's, it's, it's already late, you know, it's been scoped out, not by the right people, I must add, right? So it hasn't been thought out enough that, you know, it just landed, we had to add a bike lane and it just goes through the process, right? So sure. we have these discussions with the PMs right. and once we get is that is yeah it is what it is what it is that's what we got that's the scope we got so again it, yeah i mean that the is what it is is not a good answer um, i understand, that, I understand and, um, again and i, understand. I, I do want to be clear we reviewed these projects long ago we talked about these projects for several meetings um i think back when raj was still here yeah. um yep. and we we were not told at any point 
that these would be seeking a variance for the entire roadway to provide something substandard. I, I feel like uh, there's a bit of a bait and switch and I, I feel like the, the project manager should probably be called out for that. I, I would, uh, would request that, um, that uh, <laughs> if they're on any, any future projects that have a bike lane, then you watch them very closely and make sure that they don't pull anything like this because it's bad practice. And I understand it is what it is, but it is right. poorly done and shouldn't be done that way. Again, I, I, in that case, you're preaching to, again, you're right. You're absolutely correct. I will not yeah. argue against that. I'm going to say that going forward, thankfully, thankfully, I'm hoping there's not going to be any changes in um, staffing anytime soon. At least I'm hoping that. Um, so as far as um, oversight going forward, hopefully there'll be consistency. Unfortunately, I mean, there, there are multiple things that have impacted the review process of things like this, such as a consultant change, but also um, just the, the position change. So it, it's hard when there was Elizabeth and then there was a gap and now there's me. Um, so, but going forward from stage one, from planning, from that phase onward, we should have consistency and there should be continued push for the same things over and over and over and over again until it gets annoying. And by 100%, it'll be in there. It won't be, oh, you can't make comments at 100%. It'll be, we made comments from day one. Right. And Tiffany, can I request that you add to your spreadsheet uh, if variances are being sought for anything related to bike or ped uh, improvements? Yes, actually it should be. I, I believe that if a variation is being sought for bike ped improvements, that it should come to me. I agree. <laughs> and I think it should come to us. Absolutely, and I would bring it to you. Thank you. Um, yeah, um, I, I don't want to belabor it, but I, I just want to to figure that out and I appreciate your, um, your, uh, your stance on this. Thank you. The one more thing than that, and we'll move forward. I know we don't want to be here, but again, the goal of this bike network assessment thing that we're doing, or just putting everybody on the same page, the idea of it, right, with the deliverable that we want out of it, we, again, we always end up doing plans, they sit on the shelf, 1999 Green Range plan, right? So the, the idea is that there is some sort of accountability, it's some sort of action plan so that when it lands in scoping, whether it's DOT scoping, county scoping, municipality scoping, anybody scoping, they already, this, this, not a vision, this, 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 quarter or this this configuration this typical section that we know fits because we will take it to a level of feasibility where we know again there is a choke point but that's it so we will we would already know that and whatever and whatever concept we come up with whatever concept is approved by everybody right should be scoped from the beginning right so we should at this point know uh, where all these uh, hurdles are so that we don't get pushback when it's already scoped and then so so whenever a project you know moving forward the idea is that you know anything that I, anything that includes a bike lane or any, I mean, all pro, all new reconstruction projects have a bike lane, right? But if, but, but we'll, if they sat out a, a variance or a variation, we'll say no, because we've already done this type of pro, uh, a process, right? This assessment, we know it fits. We know this is a preferred location. There's a preferred um, typical section, right? And it shouldn't, you know, there shouldn't be any, there shouldn't be a reason for a variation from the get-go, right? So again, that's the idea. And that's the, that's, our, that's been our experience, kind of our lesson learned from all these plans reviews. Um, but yeah, again, duly noted, and um, and it is it hasn't been for lack of trying, you know. Again, not to excuse our, ourselves or anything like that. It's just again, we the message is always uh, relayed and, and and tried. And like Tiffany would tell you, you know, we we've, we've been able to make changes for others, we've gotten plenty of pushback. And I also oh, right. say, I I also have to say, sorry, I don't want to extend this meeting like beyond you know, <laughs> but I do want to state that I think maybe it's just I would definitely say FDOT staff but also perhaps even our partners. I think, um, I think training, a good, a good piece of training, and not just, not just going over what our standards are, but saying really what the reasoning behind those, those standards are, and the, the giving descriptions, giving kind of experiences, giving people a real life look at what, what the benefit of bike facilities and what the benefit of safe bike facilities is. I think that type of training, that type of education could be really beneficial to, I would even see our consultants, um, FDOT staff, I would say maybe even county. So I'd say that's something to maybe put on the docket for future as well. Um, again, I don't know where the funding is gonna come from at, the, at this point, but I would say that's something that I wanna keep my eye on as far as potential. 
um, within Miami-Dade County and even Monroe County. Great, great. Thank you uh, both very much. Um, I'm so, assuming that's everything for this one, right? I Yeah, if you want, the next two are the same thing. We definitely oh, I'm sorry. The Ludlam, which is coming up. You guys, again, you discussed it plenty just to show it that it was part of, you know, the network. It's adding to it. And then the next is the bridge over 41st Street. Uh, that's still in procurement. It's still, you know, it's, it's, it's design build. It's up to, but again, it's just adding, it's linking a trail that today doesn't have, right? It's adding to the network. Right, so it's a it's a gap that the, we go as short as you know spanning over a roadway or as long as right again we're we're filling in gaps or or these projects we've assessed or determined that some of the ones that we reviewed preferably more than three every single time um, are adding to the to the network right so and I think that that should conclude it I think the the rest uh, Ed um, gave and the only one thing I would add is again. I encourage you all again the, the the link is there for the network and again it, we don't need it's not a fancy app it's, it's not a way to 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 sell another gadget it's the idea is to put everything in one page you know there's a lot of data out there it's all disjointed similar to the bike network right so it's it's how much can we put in there how much can you guys give us so that whatever anybody's looking at it's the most current and the most accurate right so that we can build on it that's kind of it so again Go in there, provide the feedback with the tool. If not, just write an email, send a uh, spreadsheet, a PowerPoint, whatever it is. Just give us feedback, even if it is on the on the actual network and, and the assessment. Just just give us as much feedback as you as you can, because that's the only way that you know. And and again, the idea this is the very first stages, and this is where it has to be set up. Not at you know, hundred percent. Now when plans are being prepared, et cetera, et cetera. But you know, that's that's kind of it. I'll shut up now. And thank you. I uh, appreciate your, um, your reports. Um, I guess if there are any questions on this um, before we move on. Hearing none, our next item is the uh, underlying presentation. It's an informational item. Uh, Patrice, long time. How are you? Uh, good evening, everyone. I'm embarrassed to say I am in my car right now. As Kevin can tell you, um, I just gave a tour to a bunch of people on the underline because it's just about to open. Well, just about me and ish. <laughs> we are um, finished with all the major infrastructure items, but now we're doing a lot of the superficial or the cosmetic applications. So I'd love to walk you through where we are in the process. Again, I'm on Southwest 8th Street and so I am parked very safely. I would never be able to do this, I want to assure all of you, while driving. So with that, could we have the next slide please? Uh, hopefully by now you're all familiar after almost seven years of Meg Daly tirelessly advocating for the 10 mile linear park, hopefully you're familiar with our mission what really attracted me to this is that it really is the convergence of everything the bike ped advisory committee is trying to accomplish it's not only trying to make sure that we have a safe place for bicyclists and walkers but also a place where we can celebrate innovation diversity and resilience um, so next slide so you can see when we're finished uh, it will be more than 10 miles Long, uh, ranging from the Miami River all the way to Dade Land South. And you can see that touches eight metro rail stations and nine million transit users. So we feel like we have a built-in uh, audience, but what's also exciting um, is the 250,000 residents, the 14,000 businesses, the 24 schools that this touches. So we really feel this is the place where everyone can gather. Next, please. So phase one, that's what I was just giving a tour of, um, actually has moved along quite a bit since here. Uh, next slide. This, by the way, extra points, does anybody know where this, this, this picture was taking place? <clears throat> it was the Ulay room, so the, that's, <laughs> you now have the uh, title there, but that's what it's gonna look Wall like Street. when it's finished. Some, pardon? Uh, Southwest 12th Street. Yes, Coral Way, right there. Yep. Um, yeah, you might be right. It's actually closer to 12th Street here, <laughs> Colin. Um, but so 
I think what you all would might really appreciate is in the Oolite room, we went to extra lengths to make sure that even though the biking and the walking paths are right next to each other, that they're separated. So you see that Oolite stone that is in the that runs in the middle, that's actually going to serve as kind of like your um, rumble strip. So if you're a cyclist, you're going to know to get back in your lane. But also the icon, the all the icons along the trail are instructing people, hey, this is where you're meant to be. This is where you belong. At the same time, it's a nice passive area where you can be enjoying a lunch. There will be free Wi-Fi along the entire trail. So we encourage everyone to bring your laptop, you know, do your work outside, you know, literally you could bike to work and this is work, right? So um, I should also point out, because I think you'll be interested is the instructional signs on the column on the right, you know, there will be historical markers as well as areas where we take note of, for instance, park rules or where maybe a special program might take place. Next slide. So a lot of people want to know how this was funded. Um, I think, you know, most of you have seen that uh, there's a lot of different levels of funding. So I think the uh, MPO or I'm sorry, the TPO always talks about this funding lasagna. And this is definitely all different levels. So you've got a federal grant as well as state funding and then various municipalities as well as, of course, the county. And what's notable about that federal grant that uh, the underlying team secured in, in 2019 is that as soon as they accepted it, then the federal government said, okay, you have to finish the entire project by 2025. So the project went from nine phases to three phases. And you can see those spelled out here. So the first phase, which is gonna open up hopefully in November, um, is the Brickle Backyard, Miami River to Coral Way. And then that next phase, which actually is already, it's a design build project. It's already begun. Um, we're about to do it in late November with the county. And so the design's already begun, but begun on that. When they reach 35%, they wanna go out to the public. So we'll definitely be touching uh, base with you. And then uh, the third phase is the longest phase. That's the seven plus miles. So you can see we've also been very active with our fundraising. Uh, you know, more than seven million raised, and actually we're very aware of how expensive it is going to be to maintain this. So we're out knocking on doors, pursuing grants every day. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is. Um, everything that we've actually, thank God, um, secured last week. Uh, so the approval of the contractor for phase two, as I mentioned, so they're already working on it. And then uh, we've also approved a trust fund, I, I guess it's through the FPL. Uh, it's called the Downtown Miami um, Investment Project that FPL had to give the county funds anyway for some of the work they're doing and so those funds will be set aside to help kickstart a maintenance fund for the underline and then um, some of the rest you know honestly I'm not going to get into it's very detailed but because we're considered a park we have to do background checks we have to make sure that everybody who works on the underline nobody's ever been committed of a felon. I mean, it's never been a committed felon. So, you know, little things like that that get very deep into the weeds. So next slide. So this is our budget. Um, some people ask about it. It's um, pretty uh, overwhelming when you think about it, but you can see our number one expense is maintenance and security. For those of you, like Tiffany, I'm sure this doesn't surprise you. Those of you who manage infrastructure projects, um, I know one of your previous employees at FDOT used to always say that building was always the cheapest part because maintaining is forever. So we understand that we're out trying to raise funds, but you can kind of see what goes into running the first phase, and this is just a half mile. I should note um, the programming there, so that total park programming piece that's 283,000, that cannot be paid for with any public dollars. So that we put there, really that's only paid for as we secure funds to pay for that programming. So the rest, you can just see that kind of makes up our budget. Next slide. 
So again, just for, to give you a little more orientation, the half mile that we have involves four different rooms. The river room, as you can imagine, is the room closest to the river. I encourage you all to get out when we're open because it's full of native plantings. It's gorgeous. And then we have the gym. So those of you who enjoy playing either uh, basketball or soccer, we're gonna have a half court uh, basketball and then a mini soccer field. It's on asphalt, so I should be very clear with you. It's not really a field, but it's a, a mini soccer court. And then the Oolite room, which I already showed you. And some of these things, unfortunately, um, were a little value engineered. So like the hammock play zone isn't quite the way it appears in those images. Next slide. So the river room, as I mentioned, and it actually, I encourage you, you can go to the river walk and look through the gates right now. Um, even though it still has a construction fence around, you can see it actually looks very close to this because it is so lush right now. It's that native perennial peanut grass is grown in. We have the mooly grass grown in, the milkweed. There are so many things thriving right now. So butterflies are everywhere. So they've been extremely happy in this area. And then of course we have a, a water, um, I'm sorry, a dog friendly area where you can walk your dog. So it's mulch, it has the doggy bags and you know it'll be a great place to meet fellow dog owners. Next slide. And then as I mentioned, the flex court uh, where you can play basketball or soccer. We've already had lots of inquiries about this. Um, the green fences have been put up. We're waiting for a very tailored um, custom made hinge for one of the gates that actually, this is the only part of the underline that will be locked in the evenings. So what's great about the underline, it's open 24 seven. What's bad about the underline, it's open 24 seven. So we're, <laughs> so we're having to maintain it 24 hours a day, but it's very exciting. You can go for a romantic stroll, you can go for a bike ride late at night and you will not feel unsafe. Next slide. There you get a better sense of our bike trail as well as we will have an outdoor stage. Um, it's about a 700 square foot stage right there in the open off of Southwest 8th Street with a uh, 2,000 square foot plaza. And what's exciting about that is that anything can perform there, whether it's a band, a yoga class, we're really gonna try to make sure that nonprofits feel very welcome to perform in our space. As you can see also, it's gonna be a much more comfortable place to wait for a bus. We're celebrating that multimodal piece of our nature, of our trail, and so we really wanna make sure it's comfortable for everyone who's enjoying the underline. Next slide. These are our gaming tables on the bottom. So you, whether you're playing chess or dominoes, you can have a, you can enjoy it. Actually, those just went in this week. They're bright green, they're beautiful. I encourage you to stop by, take a look at that. And then on the top is our communal 50 foot dining table. We understand with COVID, we're gonna to have to figure out how to make that work but it is beautiful. And the idea is to really have everyone come and interact. There's a Publix right across the street so you can pick up whatever, your sub, your fried chicken and walk over and enjoy it with your free Wi-Fi, with your friend, you can just relax. Next slide. So I mentioned some of this programming, but this really, you know, we talked about our mission at the beginning, but it's really important to emphasize that we do wanna be the place where you feel comfortable gathering, whether it's for art and culture. We are going to have public art throughout the underline. We've already had, thanks to the uh, generous grant by the Knight Foundation, we've already secured several pieces of art that will be going in um, over the next few months. One is by uh, a young Haitian American artist here in Miami. So brilliant. He's doing a mural on one of the maintenance buildings along the trail in the Oolite room. And it's all about the immigrant experience. So we're very excited about that. We also have another piece that's gonna be going in a mural on the trail, on the walking trail. And then we have education, lots of uh, partnerships with schools. We've already received a grant to uh, give children, or actually it's teens from underserved communities, uh, jobs as ambassadors, giving tours of the underline in the afternoon. So it's a great way to give people the skills they need for a professional job, but also helping us. So it's a win-win. 
and we always like to remind everybody about the free Wi-Fi. We're not able to disclose who that provider is yet, but they've been out on the site putting in the infrastructure. We're very excited that, again, it's part of that equity piece that anyone can come in. There's, there's no cost to entering the underline, so everyone's welcome. Next slide. And of course, you know, we really, sorry, the formatting on that got a little messed up here, it looks like, but I talked about this early on, um, about all of our users, the nearby residents, but also important to remember, this is a resilience project. So we're creating 120 acres of new green space. We're putting in bioswales in future phases. We're gonna plant more than 4,000 trees. And then, you know, of course, the economic development piece of this. And Colin, I'm pleased to say that we're working with the city of Miami to ensure that we aren't displacing people as all that economic development happens. So the last thing we want to do is create gentrification, especially here in one of the last affordable neighborhoods of Brickell. This section I'm sitting on west of the metro rail has still some affordable housing as well as housing for elderly and we want to make sure that we're, we don't push that out. Next slide. So again, the, you know, we're really getting deep into the demographics here. Just, you know, a lot of people, I think the reason we list this is a lot of people say, oh, the underline, it only goes to wealthy neighborhoods. As you can see by the household income breakdown, that's not true. And um, we really try to make sure that people understand all the neighborhoods that we touch. We're not just going through wealthy neighborhoods. Um, but happy to share, or I'm sure Kevin can give you all a copy of this if you'd like to really digest those details. Next slide. And then, you know, we like to use this quote because it really reminds everybody of the impact because we do get, as you can imagine, some critique of our project cost. Um, we know it's expensive. Um, I didn't quite comprehend the cost that went in, what went into the cost until I started working here about seven months ago. Uh, just the arsenic cleanup alone is over $2 million. So, you know, those kinds of expenses are hidden. Nobody will ever be able to point to that when they're walking on the underline, but they're quite necessary. Uh, next slide. So this is a quick video. Um, I'm hoping we can start from the very beginning, uh, just from a few of our partners talking about why they invested in the underline. So could you play that please? Welcome to the underline's Brickle Backyard opening this fall. Let's take a look at the construction and talk to some of our supporters. We support the underline because it will connect communities transit riders, and people who live and work in the downtown. Now more than ever, we need beautiful places to enjoy nature, bike, and walk with or without your dog. Apoyamos al Underline porque son espacios públicos como este donde jóvenes y familias crecen en comunidad. Aquí, en el gimnasio, podemos jugar baloncesto con nuestros vecinos, traer a nuestros hijos e hijas los fines de semana para jugar fútbol, o simplemente desconectar del día a día haciendo un poco de ejercicio. Apoyo el Underline porque el parque ofrecerá música gratuita, baile y otros programas culturales. Además, hay yoga, zumba y meditación, creando una comunidad más alegre, sana y mucho más conectada. I support the Underline because programs at the 50-foot dining table will bring people together for cafecitos, picnics, engaging culinary experiences, or even art classes for all ages. I support the Underline because great parks are fun. I can't wait because the plants and trees will bring more butterflies and birds, creating a greener, more beautiful city for kids like me. The Underline needs your support. Sponsor a tree, a garden, public art, or a community program. Thank you. So with that, I'm happy to answer any questions. Yes, Eric Toberg, uh, will there be a water fountain with a bottle filler and a place for pets in the yeah. river room, uh, dog bark? 
Yes, 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 Eric. It's so funny, Meg. I just was talking to Meg on the tour, and she said that is the first question Eric is going to ask. And I was just looking at it. Unfortunately, we have it all covered up for COVID. But yes, we have a bottle filler, a normal, I guess, your standard uh, water fountain, and a doggy water fountain. So all three in one in the river room. Excellent. I'll be. I'll probably be conducting some tours down the impact. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you. I did want to report that we just received today, I'm pretty sure, because I, I got an email from Lee, um, that we just received the 45% plans for phase two. Oh, wow, you did. Well, we haven't seen those. <laughs> so, oh, okay. I don't know, but um, yeah, we just received um, notice that, um, that we should upload those to our review. Oh, wow, okay, good to know. Thank you, Tiffany, for being so communicative. <laughs> Well, the BPAC would like to see them as soon as they're available. Absolutely. For sure. We can ask the county to come present to you. I think that'd be Irene Hegedus. Any other questions or comments? Uh, I'd like to, uh, this is Hank. I uh, just want to say how amazing and impressive it all is. It really is just astounding and congratulations well thank you hank i hope you have lots of bike rides that start or end here i'm sure we will great it's important that we get the uh, uh plans as soon as possible because we don't want to be told well nothing could be done uh, we agree and we've actually said that to the designers we said you know you have to leave uh, room for community input. This cannot be baked before you go out to the community. So I, you know, I am concerned, Tiffany, you're saying you've already received that because, but anyway, you know, we'll, we'll uh, contact through Irene, the, the designers. Yes, I'm, I just, I know they're trying to meet their deadlines and there is a rush because of the, the you know, of the 2025 deadline. Um, but yes, I will, I mean, as soon as I get it to, because it has to go through the lap office for distribution mm -hmm. um, for phase two, but um, I, I assure you that they'll probably they'll make me a reviewer on that. I know that I'm I have a meeting with the underline I think on Friday even with the with Lee. So I've asked Irene to involve me in all communication. Oh, okay. Yes, that's wonderful. If we're all anchoring to Irene, then we'll all get the correct information. All right, I think Eric had a, were you going to uh, do a reso of support? Was that what I heard? Well, this is an informational item, so it is, reso is not. Okay. Needed. I do I have a request. Um, Patrice, could you send me, I know you had said for Mobility Week, you were gonna send me, um, well, either you or Meg had said you were gonna send me a couple videos. Um, yes. Could you send me at least, um, could you send me that one that you just showed and maybe um, one other if you have it? Sure. Our, okay. I thought our marketing person did that, but I will, I'll follow up. I'm just taking notes right here. Okay. Yeah. Just I, cause I'll look back at my emails, but I don't think I got the videos. Okay. Maybe, I'm sorry. Maybe I, did. maybe I did. I'll look, I'll look. I just, okay. maybe I just don't remember. I'll look. We'll, we'll confirm. Okay. Sounds good. Hi, Patrice. It's Melissa Heggie. I have a, just a quick question. Nice to see you. Good seeing you. Um, so I was just thinking about what, you, what you, the slide you put up that talked about how the underline goes through um, all neighborhoods um, and some of the, the less affluent communities. So I was just wondering, can you talk about um, how the underline might impact um, Little Havana and Overtown and how, how the people in those neighborhoods make those connections? Sure. I mean, it's a real critical point, and thanks for bringing it up, Melissa. So we've already been in touch with Overtown, um, and, and you're right, it's a bit of a stretch when you look on a map, but it's actually so close. And so we're trying to make sure they know that this is a, um important destination that they can reach. Um, we're working with the Miami Downtown Development Authority on some bike lanes. I know, uh, Colin, you're working on that as well, that could actually connect Brickell to downtown, which then that would be how 
Overtown would get and South Miami Avenue is is one of those corridors that's being targeted for a bike lane. And then um, as far as Little Havana, yeah, believe it or not, it's it's only a half mile connection there. And so we are looking at, you know, those fingers, how they feed into the underline. And what I'm excited about is that the city of Miami has um, incentives for developers to look at those bike sheds and identify where they can invest in a bike lane. Um, and I don't know if you've been to Boston, but it's really exciting to see what happened after the Rose Kennedy Parkway was built. That, that now almost all the streets that intersect that greenway are full of bike lanes. And it's, you know, I really think the market partly dictated that. So I'm hoping the same thing happens here is that once people see the demand to the, you know, for the underline, they're all going to start saying, well, we need to get connected there. Eric Toberg, there's no path that crosses the Miami River. That's a real problem. Yeah, it's something that the city brought up. Um, you know, I do think there's right of way. I just was driving down South Miami today in that little roundabout. Um, there is a, yeah, it, it's been intended for a bike lane to go over the Miami Avenue bridge for a long time. They did um, improve the shoulders for bike uh, riders, um, but it's not marked. And coming off of the bridge, uh, there are no lanes in either direction. So it's something we really need to work with um, with Miami-Dade County Public Works uh, or Transportation of Public Works to implement. Yes, uh, although I think there's a real need for a path. Uh, bike lanes are fine, but we want to get the pedestrians to come too. And uh, we really need a, a, a way for pedestrians and cyclists who are not willing to ride on the road to get across the Miami River. And I, I think this is a good conversation too to be a part of the bike network plan. Just speaking. Absolutely, those north-south connections are critical. This is great. Um, do you have anything else you want to add, or does anyone else have any um, any feedback? I just want to encourage all of you to keep an eye out for our opening date. I think you're all going to enjoy it. And in the meantime, please make sure you're following us on social media. We do want to make sure we're trying to hit 10,000 followers. I'm not sure why our social media person could tell you, but it's something to do. It makes our lives easier. So please follow us if you're not already following us on social media. Patrice, what's the date again of the... <laughs> we don't have an exact date. We um, So I just say November. <laughs> okay. <laughs> But I'm hoping uh, by mid-November, you know, the fences will be down and that we'll have, you know, you'll be able to enjoy it, all the aspects. We'll say by Thanksgiving. There you go. I like I'm that. I'm very grateful for it. Yes. <laughs> great, great. All right. Thank you so much, Patrice. Thank you, Colin. Good seeing you all. Bye-bye. All right, Kevin, take it away. Okay. Item nine is the BPAC 2020 attendance report. Next slide, please. You can see everybody's on the next two slides. You'll see uh, the attendance for the year uh, for each of you. So far, no one is in, in any uh, uh, difficulties, in light, especially with us losing uh, three meetings this year because of uh, various circumstances. Um, only, so uh, that's, that's, that's the new problem right there. And then go on to the next slide. The next meeting, as you know, we moved, our, moved all the meeting dates up. Next meeting is be Tuesday, November 10th, the uh, day before uh, Veterans Day. And I don't have any other uh, new information to mention. And if I... Uh, right, on that note, um, thank you so much, Kevin, and, um, and the Kimley folks for, for running this meeting. I uh, certainly appreciate everything and um, on that note, I, this meeting is adjourned. Okay, meeting time ended 7.15. Thank you very much, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you.